Hi hey guys, it's time for a new video. It's almost a month now that I uploaded my last video. It's time for another one. Well, what are, can we see here? Yeah? El Chipo DCTC converter, uh, transformer from the El Chipo DCTC converter, and something behind there. But I will come to that later. <coughs> Sorry. Well, uh, if you get a transformer like that and to, you want to use it, but you don't have any data of it, what do we do? Well, exactly this I will show you today. The ways I use, the methods I use to characterize the resonant frequency of a transformer to find out the approximate operational frequency of a transformer and to find out the winding phasing of a transformer. As you can see, the dot convention. As you can see, I already have put the dot from primary to secondary, which one corresponds and are phased in phase and out phase. So the first thing, I want to show you is how you can approximately again this is not a, a exact science it is just yeah in the ballpark how to find the uh, resonant frequency of a transformer there are quite a few methods the easiest methods are you use a signal generator and a scope this other second easy method is to use a grid dip meter. But to be honest, who of you still uses a grid dip meter? I made two videos about one grid dip meter that I own and one that I designed by myself. But except of that, grid dip meters were be used in the past here. Yeah? Unfortunately, they are quite versatile, but nobody uses them anymore. So, let me show you first what is necessary uh, to measure the resonant frequency of a transformer. Yeah. So, what we have here. This is the setting you have, you need. DUT means device under test. It looks like a capacitor, but it can be capacitor and an and inductor, uh, whatever. You need a frequency generator with a variance with a variable frequency where you can vary the frequency. And here you put the primary of the transformer, and in series you put a resistor. I use a 100 ohm resistor, and you measure across the voltage, across the resistor with a scope. It's easier with a scope than with a meter. Yeah? When the resonant frequency is, when the frequency is near the resonant frequency of the transformer, you will see a dip of the amplitude, like in a dip meter. And then if you continue getting higher with this frequency, the amplitude starts to go a little bit up again. So it is up, 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 or in the same level, and then you suddenly have a, a dip, and then it continues. And this is more or less the resonant frequency. Let's take a look how it, how it, how it works. Okay, I'm using this frequency generator. It's, of course, a cheap Chinese one. I don't have another one, but it's more than adequate for the job I, I want to do. And, uh, and the scope itself. I have connected the transformer. I using, I'm using a 100 ohm resistor in series and I'm measuring bit on the, the, the voltage drop or the amplitude across this uh, resistor positive to the one side then goes to the transformer wing on wing resistor 
negative and to the scope. For example, here I am at 190. This transformer normally uh, is, uh, is used with 73 kilohertz at this, with this uh, DC-DC converter. So let's start with 70 kilohertz. The amplitude is more or less the same. One moment. Okay, we are at 260 kilohertz. So I don't know who is lying at the moment. The, <laughs> the, the generator that says 260 mega kilohertz or the scope that says 250 kilohertz. Let's spread it a little bit even more no not good yeah more or less 260 okay now we have the same frequency count okay i didn't want it to do that because you don't see it that good i want to do it that so let's continue going up 270 290 300 310, 330, 340, oops, and 350, it goes up again. 340, 340, 330. So, again, 320 mega uh, kilohertz, 330 kilohertz, 340, 330. 340, 350. You see the dip? And the dip is present at 340 kilohertz. So let's make it, let's spread it again to have the... It is more or less at 340 something. That's approximately, yeah? That means the resonant frequency is approximately between 335 and 34 something kilohertz. So this is the very easy way that you can uh, empirically found out, find out the resonant frequency of an unknown transformer. And of course the operating frequency has to be well below the resonant frequency. So let's continue now and have a check what approximately again would be the uh, the operating frequency. Okay, now let's check the approximately operating frequency of this transformer. For that, you connect the primary and the secondary. Here, I connected one part of the secondary only. It doesn't, ma it doesn't matter. And the primary. And we are at 150 kilohertz. Yeah, I'm using one volt sine wave, and this is how it looks. The yellow uh, trace is the trace that comes directly from the, uh, from, the from, from the generator with a BNC T, T uh, spreader or divider that goes from one side goes directly to the transformer. And the other side goes to the, okay, we have a problem here. Okay, good. What do we see here? Let's make it a little bit more visible. We are at the moment at 150 kilohertz. I will increase in 10 kilohertz steps. The blue trace is the secondary of the transformer. The frequency goes up, the amplitude goes up. Where we are at 190 kilohertz. Now we have it. We are we are at 200. At least this is what I'm seeing here. Yeah, 
and now let's go to 210 it's still rising and now it's falling see 200 kilohertz 190 that means that the operating frequency is something between 200 like now and 220 at 230 it falls again the amplitude so this is how you can can not measure but uh, not even calculate but find out empirically with a scope and the and the signal generator the operating frequency if the frequency is still going up and the amplitude is going up when the, when you, when you uh, increase the frequency then the transformer is can still handle this frequency but at the moment it falls down it 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 if the amplitude shrinks and get less then we have reached the operating frequency and the operating frequency here is at more or less 210 kilohertz let's say 200 kilohertz because it doesn't change much with that a little bit 210 200 210 kilohertz that means we are really lot a lot a lot less than the resonant frequency way apart because the resonant frequency was 340 or something whatever what i remember yeah so this is how you can find out the empirically with just a frequency generator at least this is how i'm doing it you can do it if you have a better solution no problem but this is how i'm doing it um I have the scope, I have the frequency generator, and this is how I can find out the, in at least in the correct ballpark, the frequent, the operating frequency of this transformer that is near 200 kilohertz. And this is what I will use in my next design. This is a design that I made from using this transformer that goes up to one kilovolt. That's the first iteration, but I'm still using the 73 kilohertz that the Chinese used. The second, this, this design will be shown in a different video as part one. Anyway, so, and the last thing that I want to show you is how to find out the polarity, the phase between the windings, primary and secondary, and the dot convention. By the way, guys, if you like my videos, if you like what you see, if you like my content, uh, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, uh, press the notification button so you can get informed when I have new videos. The most of my viewers, first of all, thank you all of my viewers, subscribers or not, but most of my viewers, almost 70%, 60 to 70% are non-subscribers. Guys, Guys, it's, it's, it doesn't cost anything. It's free and it helps me a lot. So if you like it, subscribe it. Wow, that rhymes. Anyway, let's continue now. My, the last theme, the last item that I want to show you how to determine the phase, the phase between the primary and the secondaries, eventually secondaries of one transformer. So now, I have a transformer and I want to find out the phase relation between the windings. It's in phase or out of phase. So here, the way I have connected the transformer, the primary, that's the yellow, is out of phase, 180 degrees out of phase of the, for, for the secondary, the blue one. And this is how I connected it. You see, I have on the one side, the positive output of the generator and on the other side of the coil of the primary, the other side, the negative side of the uh, generator. 
And on the secondary side, I have the ground clip and in the middle the, uh, the positive side of the, uh, of the scope. And just to show you, if you, I don't know, if you see this red dot, I already know the polarity of this one. Let's change the the the, the polarity of, of the primary. And what we see now, we are in sync. And on the other side, as you can see, I have the dots again. This is a very, very easy method, thank you Robert Bolaños, to find out the phase relationship between primary and secondary and the dot convention. So, this is, has nothing to do with the frequency here, you can, can go lower or higher. Of course, you probably, I, I, this is not a, a, a part of this video, you can show the relation between the winding, the number of turns of primary and secondary, because you can see here the channel. I have both channels at five volts and you see the difference. But anyway, this has nothing to do with this video now. It will be in a part two probably. So for this video, I showed you how to find out, or my way to find out the, uh, the resonant frequency of the transformer, the working frequency of, the, of an unknown transformer, approximately, please, yeah? This is nothing that is precise. It's in the ballpark. And exactly how the phase relation between primary and secondary or, the, or secondaries is in an unknown transformer. Well, this is all what I want to show you today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe my channel. Stay safe, my friends, and see you next time. Cheers.